Hello and welcome to Faith and Friends. This is the second full week of June and we're still talking about brotherly kindness. What is brotherly kindness? Well, it's a part of our 2016 Faith Challenge, which is derived from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5-7. through 7. In that passage, seven important biblical character traits are discussed, each one building upon the next. Brotherly kindness is number six. It's our Faith Challenge topic focus for June. The FreeDictionary.com defines brotherly kindness as a kindly and lenient attitude toward people, an inclination to do kind or charitable acts, and a natural virtue created by God. But other theologians will also say that brotherly kindness can mean standing up to your brother when he or she is not living in a godly manner. And yes, in this context, brother does not just refer to your physical brothers. We're talking all mankind, male and female. So this week, we are here to encourage you to be thinking about the ways God is calling you to brotherly kindness. It could mean paying the food cost for the person behind you in the drive-thru. Maybe it'll be taking your sick relative to a doctor visit that's out of town. Maybe it's mowing a neighbor's yard. Or maybe it's having that tough conversation with a friend who's struggling to live as God has called him or her to do. Think carefully about how you can apply brotherly kindness in your life today. A brotherly kindness related scripture coming up in a moment, but first some things to look forward to in today's show. Jennifer will take a trip to our Daily Bread Soup Kitchen as they're in the middle of their 25th year of operation. Our marriage series this week talks about leadership in marriage, and we're back in the kitchen with a low-carb, high-protein, easily portable lunch idea. Now for our scripture, Andy. All right, also easily portable from Hebrews chapter 13. 1 and 2, and then as well, verse 5. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are, are, are in the body also. Let your conduct be without covetedness. Be content with such things as you have, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That promise from Scripture, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So how are we living that out today in our lives to help others who maybe don't realize that promise that God is with them through the tough times? You know, God will never leave you nor forsake you. And that message is for all ages, all financial classes. It's a message for all and one that is heard by those who regularly visit our Daily Bread Soup Kitchen. 25 years ago, the Soup Kitchen opened in Lima and as Jennifer reports, the purpose and plan of this downtown ministry is to feed body, mind, and spirit. It's a Thursday in late May at Our Daily Bread Community Center on Central Street in Lima. The parking lot is full, and that only tells a partial story of all who are inside. Walkers, bicyclists, motorists, and more are gathering to break bread together. This Lima area soup kitchen has been in operation since 1991. Last year we served 39,501 meals. Uh, that's averaged about 158 through the days that we're open. And that starts out at the beginning of the month we can have 86 to 90 people. And then by the end of the month you were looking at 200, 230, 240 sometimes, especially in the summertime when the kids are out of school. Randy Kimple and Scott Catlett serve as co-directors at Our Daily Bread. 25 years ago, when the soup kitchen opened, it was to fill a need in this community. Now, a quarter century later, this nonprofit organization continues to fill that need. For many, this has been a regular place of gathering for a long time. For Catlett, he's been here seven years. It just happened to be my 51st birthday on August 16th when I went out to church, and for some reason I felt compelled to go to the altar that day, and I said, Lord, you know, if you make it clear to me what it is you want me to do, I will go and do it. Wherever you send me, I'll go. Whatever you ask me to do, I'll do. And uh, within three minutes, I was approached by a friend from the church who I didn't know was affiliated with the board of directors here at this time and uh, said that uh, I was the first person God put on his heart to see if I'd be interested. The position had just opened up. That friend at the altar was Don McClure, a board member for Our Daily Bread from 2007 to 2015. McClure says there are so many reasons why this ministry is serving the needs in our community. You and I, we can go to the grocery store and we can buy food and make a meal, but we've got folks here, there's no grocery store. 
within walking distance. And a lot of people walk to our daily bread or ride a bike. And so you're not going to get three bags of groceries on a bike. But that food need is just one reason. Our Daily Bread is open Monday through Friday from 10 to 3, 12 months out of the year. Five days a week, patrons can look forward to a nutritious meal, but that's only the start of what they receive. It just not only is it feeding, but I, I feel that the ministry part of our Daily Bread is even more important because it's make a connection with people, establishing a, a friendship and a relationship with them. And that way they're more in, in touch to uh, any other. They come to us for different advice. Once they learn to trust us, a lot of people come to us for advice and then we're able to point them in the direction that they need to go. To. We start each day with a scripture reading and a devotion because we want to feed their bodies because that takes a care of an immediate need, but we're interested in their spiritual need, which is eternal. A lot of times in society, some of them are just not a part of regular society, so to speak. Here they can come, they're, they're part of the place, you know, and, and that alone, you can see a change in people once they come here and find us. Uh, and it's also a place for people to serve God. It's, it's, uh, you know, there's, it's a unique place to serve God because uh, you, know, you can do a food pantry and you pass food out to people that come through, but here you can spend an hour and, and just sharing stories and you know, just, just talking to people and, and sharing God's Word with them too. Maybe it's that level of relationship building that keeps the volunteers coming back, churches, businesses, and on this particular day, the ONU nursing program, corporations, all recognizing that it's valuable to be involved with our daily bread. We still have a lot of folks like Ford and St. Rita's and other people in the community that are coming in and, and helping us. And it, it's not just the average Joe, it's the top brass of these organizations are coming in too. So they see things and they ask, what do you need? And you know, they can open up doors that we never believed had a door to them. God is in charge of our daily bread. And as we have a need, God brings us people that help us reach out to our community. Uh, we had Steve Jenkins, who was a tremendous personal uh, public relations person. He got us out into new areas. So when he does that, more people start coming in saying, how can I help our daily bread? What, what do you need to get to our daily bread to the next level? And what is the next level? A storage building located to the rear of the soup kitchen property is just about complete. And there are other plans that the directors would like to see become reality as well. We're hoping to be able to install a shower uh, for people that don't have the water in their house or they may not have the gas bill paid, so they don't have hot water. We'd like to expand our bathroom a little bit. We only have one, one stool in the men's room. Well, we got more men than we have women, so that gets a little waiting, waiting line sometimes. It started in 1991, the brainchild of 18 churches. Today, it continues to prosper thanks to the many who believe in this ministry and the continual faithfulness of our Heavenly Father. Congratulations to Our Daily Bread Soup Kitchen and Community Center, celebrating 25 years of changing lives, one meal at a time. For more information on the needs of Our Daily Bread, visit their website, odbread.org, or call 419-224-2086, or stop by during open hours at their location, 125 South Central Avenue in Lima. Now from one food story to another, it's time for our Lost Creek Care Center Stop in the Kitchen with an original recipe created by our own chef, Jennifer Beck. Welcome to our Lost Creek Care Center Stop in the Kitchen today, and today we're making a gluten-free, low-carb recipe that I actually created myself, and I'm going to pitch it to Matt and Andy and see what they think of it. Back in January, I was diagnosed with, uh, actually I was not diagnosed, I was told to go on a low-carb, gluten-free diet. And so suddenly I was finding myself trying to figure out how I could incorporate high protein, high protein was added in, high protein items into my diet and keep everything else. So I have tried all kinds of different things. I've waited until I've perfected the recipe oh, okay, good. to bring it to how you guys. How many times have you had this meal? 
Um, well, let's see. How many weeks have we had since January? <laughs> okay. I think Once I've had it probably three out of five days every week oh, since wow. January. Okay. But I've I've discovered that you can twist it and change it and, mm. and make it creative okay. and different. But I'm going to give you my classic favorite recipe. So if you're looking for a low carb, if you are looking for a high protein, low carb, gluten free, soy free, it's not dairy free, but it could be. Basically anything that fits your needs, here we go. Does it taste like chocolate? Well, I'm sure you could adapt it to make it oh, taste really? like chocolate if you really want. Right. Like then I'm on board. Let's go. <laughs> we could use Nutella instead of cream cheese. Yeah, All right. So we that'd are starting out with, it's actually a lettuce wrap adaption. So we need some lettuce. And I have done a lot of research on lettuce over the past few months. You can get huh. um, your regular, le you can get your regular iceberg lettuce. You can get, um, um, romaine lettuce. I've tried all of these and I found the best lettuce wraps are done with living lettuce. Living. Living lettuce. So guys, if you want to take a what, slice what of the living, living lettuce, well, it comes with the roots. I'm not exactly sure on all that, but the reason the I roots? like this is because it, it it's larger and you can yeah. fold around. It looks like a wrap. We're there ready. you go. Yeah, we're good to go. So okay. we're going to start out by spreading some spreads on here. And the first spread that I use is cream cheese. Hmm. Now, if you don't like cream cheese, you don't have to spread cream cheese on you your, your on on your thing or not. And I pick the Arla cream cheese because it's actually a very healthy cream cheese, and I am very picky on these kinds of things. Cream cheese, guys, would you like cream cheese on your thing? I would prefer not, but if you want to make one for yourself, there you go. For myself, huh? Yeah. I don't like cream cheese. Well, I how like about cheesecake. you could make two? You could make one for All me. Right. And you could make one oh, for yourself. Oh, it's just for demonstration purposes. Here you go. One that you don't have to eat. And one that you can't. It's eat. not a big cream cheese guy. No, I don't like it know. either. You might, you I don't might like change. It but Andy today. and I are we're picky, so we are very picky. So you at home try Kimmel some court, try so. some cream <laughs> cheese. <laughs> exactly. And you can see I like it What's because it adds. One? The next will be hummus. I add I red pepper hummus. Hummus, hummus next. Go. That's now a go. again, you can use whatever whatever type of hummus you like. I personally like the red pepper hummus. Here I got you a oh. brand new fresh fresh Thinking knife, so ahead. you don't have to you don't have to contaminate. It with uh, with ahead. the cream cheese. Do you, do you do a thin spread or do you really yeah. lap it on there? You know, what here's it? where it's really whatever you would like it to be. This is a very adaptable recipe. Dude, thin. I'm going with thin spread. All right. That's a good thin hummus. on one side, thick on the other. You know, again, I'm really picky on a lot of my things because there's a lot of um, packaged foods out there full of junk. So I look around, I read lots of labels. And it seems like the tribe label is pretty good. By the way, none of these products are paying us, so anything I say today is literally my own personal opinion. All right, so we've got the cream cheese, we've got the hummus, and you've got to put cream Oh, you added both? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize we were mixing. <laughs> That's all right. Next, I put on some turkey. Now, you could pick any meat that you'd like. Um, you don't have to use turkey. Sometimes I've used chicken, sometimes I've used ground beef, or you can just go without any meat at all. But as I have been trying to add protein into my diet, I've been doing that. But another note, this is lunch meat turkey that I purchased from Aldi's. It's the Never Any brand. Did you know that some turkey has gluten in it? Never. Did not. Did not know that. Yes, and a bunch of other things. So again, you've got to read your labels and you've got to know what you're actually How getting. How is there gluten in turkey? Well, we could explore the fact that a turkey never really is in the form of a turkey breast that you get in the store, but that's a whole nother segment yeah. that we don't need to go into. So I put in a slice of turkey. Next, I add in some Man's Power Blend Superfood. Now this is like a broccoli slaw type thing, and you've got some right here if you want to try it. Um, this is to add power. in some of your yeah. greens. Right. Now we're getting back some to Some of it. your greens. There's some carrots Now maybe there. if you don't have something like this, you could just do some spinach or you could add in some carrots. Sometimes I cut a pepper and I'll put a slice of pepper in there. Or maybe mm. I will I'm cut, pepper fan. maybe I'll cut a, uh, an avocado and put a slice of avocado in there. So here's where you got a little bit of meatiness to it. Okay. I mean, not like, Substance. that's not really meaty, but it makes it right. thicker. Thicker. All right, and the final thing that I put on top of my wraps is guacamole. Holy guacamole! And I like to use, even though it's more expensive, I like to use the minis because, you know, once you open up guacamole, right, it goes bad. you have to eat it. So really, you just need a dollop. Oh, a dollop. On top, on top of. Uh, I'm, out of a I'm out of clean knives here. Oh, here we go. You okay. can use a spoon. It smells pretty good. I'm very picky on my that, guacamole. Is that a, was that a dollop? I, I would probably do a little more, more? Okay. than that. Did I dollop? I would do one of these single-serve guacamoles on 
probably four of them. So that's about how much you can oh, I, you can accomplish out I of that. Extra or dollars. you can do more, or you can do less. Again, this is a recipe that is designed to meet your personal dietary needs. It can be switched around, it can be changed, but ultimately there's no bread involved. There's no gluten involved. So you're involved. ready wrapping, Andy? Um, I think so. Are we and that's right. All you have to do then, and don't forget, that's the cream this cheese is for one. You. Oh, that's for me. Yeah. All right. So all you do is wrap it up. Mm. That's good. Oh, thank you for making me no lunch, problem. Matt. Look at, look at me. Thank you so much. That's no really problem. Good. Let me try this. And there you go. All you're of a sudden, it. Yeah, the well, lettuce What did you do? Just a wrap? Yeah, like a like one time stuff. over. <laughs> that's really good. Hey. I've got one thumb up. You've made us a believer in a lot of different foods, <laughs> including in our lettuce wrap with turkey. Okay, so if you are on a dietary restriction like so many of us have been placed on, here is a great option. Remember, you can also uh, adjust it to meet your personal desires. Really good. You can enjoy it. Oh. Right, the good hum that's good hummus. All right, good hummus. very good. Did you good. do block? Yeah, I did block. Go to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com, to view this video again or to see how to do this recipe. And of course, if you have any questions, you can always call us here at TV44. Thank you, Jennifer. A reminder to you at home, you can rewatch this and all our other recipe segments online at faithandfriends.wtlw.com. We're now into week three of our series on marriage. In part one, we introduce you to the marriage ministry of vows to keep, what it is, how it was founded, how it is helping strengthen marriages. In part two, Vows to Keep founders David and Tracy Sellers discussed setting proper boundaries in marriage. Now in part three, they discuss the issue of leadership. Jennifer joins David and Tracy and asks, are you asleep at the wheel? Are you asleep at the wheel? That's the question we're asking today and we're talking about marriage. Men and women each have some biblical responsibilities that just have to happen when it comes to Forming that godly marriage, but in reality, our society has pulled us in so many different directions that sometimes it's hard to even know if we're doing those, those things correctly or not. So today we're going to talk about leadership in the home, leadership in the marriage, and we're calling it a sleep at the wheel. Dave and Tracy <laughs> Sellers from Vows to Keep are with us again today. Let's get started talking about this topic. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed as we've worked with couples is that um, Oftentimes, Christian men are really well-intentioned, but sometimes they are literally asleep at the wheel. And I think this is oftentimes because we're spending our resources, we, we're spending the, the time that we have, the energy that we have, um, on things that we shouldn't. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes we're, we're driving further than we should in a day, and we're driving in directions that we shouldn't be going. And I kind of liken it to um, you know, when we need sleep, right? We, we all know we need sleep every day. Um, we have a night without sleep, we end up with a day that is not very effective. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is true with God and in, in your relationship with God in your marriage. Um, if you don't have God as a, as a daily part of your life, um, as a husband trying to be a spiritual leader, you're, you're not going to be very effective in that. And I think we can see that played out. Without him, it's easy to become a man who's hopeless and sometimes faithless in what you're doing in, in your marriage. It's um, something that we see a pattern of oftentimes even in uh, well-intentioned Christian men, uh, that they, they have a pattern that go long enough that they can basically become very numb to the things that ultimately they should be paying close attention to. It gets kind of scary. Um, you know, it's, it's been said with, with drivers, if you're, if you're sleeping, if you're really drowsy, you're three times more likely to crash than, than if you're not. And the same thing is true in your marriage. I, I know I've found myself at times, and I think a lot of men, will we'll find themselves like, wow, I just got to my final destination, but I don't remember anything mm -hmm. along the way. So it's like we, we, we took the drive, but without any of the mental investment to actually do it well. And in your marriage as a husband, I think there'll be times where you'll find yourself in that same position. You'll find like, wow, we just went through something and I didn't think about this and it didn't necessarily result in a crash, but it could have. Mm -hmm. they're, they're really alarming, eye-opening moments I've been reading in Hebrews 12, um, and, and this has kind of been for me a little bit of the rumble strips. You know, you're on the road and you get off slightly and they, they kind of buzz at you and you, oh boy, I got to get back on the road here. Um, Hebrews 12, verse 14 has is, is got something that I feel, feel compelled to share, I guess. Um, it says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and be holy. Without holiness, no one's going to see the Lord. And I think that we can know that we're being a good 
spiritual leader in our home when there's such a hunger that we have that we see that in our wives, we see that in our kids, and we see the effects of that, and they see the effects of that in us. If you're not seeing some of those kind of things, I think you have to really take a step back and look at, you know, what are the things I need to change? How can I, how can I go from where I am to where I need to be? You know, we could talk about that a lot, and I don't want to interrupt you because I'm sure you have more to say, but as I, as a wife, think about those things, it could be easy for me to sit back and say, well, my husband should be doing this, and my husband should be doing that, and why is he not doing this? <coughs> but I really should look at myself and go, am I doing the proper things to be setting my husband up to be that leader he's supposed to be. Tracy, what are we wives supposed to be doing in this whole thing? Yeah, I think it's easy to sit in judgment to our husbands and think A, B, C, those things aren't getting done. And then women default to taking that leadership role. Yeah, yeah. If there's not a leader in the room, someone's going to automatically become that. So wives might need to use a little patience to let their husbands develop into that spiritual leader because we want to be in control. We want someone to be in control. We want someone to follow. Mm -hmm. If they're not going to do it, then we will. But that's not the biblical approach to it. We can be our husband's biggest cheerleader as he develops into that man that God has created him to be. A lot of times it's our words and our demands. I want this to happen. And we demand it so much to the point that our husbands kind of take a step back okay, I don't want to deal with her wrath any longer, so I'm just going to let her have her way. And then they kind of cut themselves off from being that leader, and they get discouraged, especially when they try to lead. It might not go quite the way we want it to. Mm -hmm. Then we critique them rather than encourage them. Oh, you are just convicting me of something I said just yesterday. <laughs> I knew it was wrong. Now God brought you here to remind me again. But we have new chances. Well, we're talking you know. to ourselves on this one too. We don't have it all figured out by any respect. Yesterday, not a stellar day in the marriage world of David and Tracy. But you know what? That's okay. We're sinners and we've got a gracious God. Absolutely. I think, you know, another thing that would be really important to, to point out, there's probably a lot of husbands who would maybe be hearing this and saying, okay, I, I think this is a weakness of mine. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where to start. Mm -hmm. I, I have no idea how to change mm -hmm. um, from the, the status quo. And I think that there's some very small but practical steps that we as husbands can take. Um, one of the things that I found, especially with our kids and with my wife, is just to talk very practically about where we sit with the Lord um, if there's a certain issue that we're dealing with, oftentimes I'll ask the question just in general to our family, mm -hmm. what does God's word ask us to do about this? Mm -hmm. And if the answer is I don't know, let's, let's actually spend some time and try and find something um, that will help guide us to, to make a decision. Uh, another very simple, small step is to just pray with your family, mm -hmm. uh, to pray over a meal, to pray as you're going to bed, and not about the food. Um, I mean, that's probably the canned thing that we often would do, but to really think critically about what are the needs that my family has today? What are the things I should be asking God for or about? What are the things we should be praising God for? And um, then taking that one step further, asking my children, asking my wife if they would lead prayer, um, you know, on some sort of rotation, just getting the whole family comfortable praying out loud. It's a huge step. It's a very sometimes small step, though, that, that starts um, the family going in the right direction. This is just one example. We probably could give lots of others. Well, and that, it, it actually sounds simpler than it may feel like because mm -hmm. like I may be able to point out all of the things that I feel are my husband's faults that he should be fixing right now. But if I start approaching those, yeah. which I probably have too many times in the past, you know, he's going to watch this and probably going <laughs> to chuckle at me. <laughs> but where am I getting? It's just an attack and attack and attack and we're creating. But we start in that prayer mode, Yeah. you know, what God can do. Yeah. And I think we as wives have to step back and, and be patient. Be patient and let our husbands step in and be willing to learn, let God guide them on how to lead. Yeah, there's a lot of times where husbands turn into the peacemakers, um, particularly where there might not be patience over an issue. Um, and I think God is very clear that he doesn't accept a husband who's just trying to pacify the situation. That's not a godly leader. A godly leader is a man who's going to step in and say, at the end of this, we need to be closer than we are when we started. And to apply the biblical principles that will help us to stay committed, uh, to help us to stay in tune with what is the biblical demands of that situation. Tracy, um, wives can sit back and not want to see this. They, they want instant change, yes. but 
can you can you kind of jump forward to people who are at home thinking, I don't think this is possible. Mm -hmm. Is it possible? In time, can things change? You better believe it. We serve not only an awesome God who is with us every step of the way, he's given us his word. And when we are willing to spend time with him, willing to apply it, even if the husband isn't, the wife can. She can start right where she's at because there's some things just practically that she can change. Just maybe zipping the lip every yeah. once in a while, <laughs> sitting back saying, babe, I, I believe in you, I, I trust you, I know that you're capable. And then when he trips and falls, helping him back up, but not critiquing, great things. We've seen couples, even just recently, sitting down with us, the wife's like, how do I get him to lead? And she just wants to shake him around the neck. And as he starts to realize the truth of the scriptures, wow, what great things can happen. So a wife in that situation, I would ask her to pray for her husband specifically in this area. All right. Anything more you want to add? Nope. It's all there. Yep. Turn to God. God's got all the answers. You bet. We're talking with David and Tracy Sellers of Vows to Keep. And maybe you noticed, you heard Tracy say, when we sit down with couples, well, that is part of what they do. You should check out their ministry, vowstokeep.com. Dot com, right? Not yep. dot org or dot yeah, net, not com. anything. Vowstokeep.com, the address is right there on your screen. That is just one of the amazing things that they do, all with a goal of bringing God back into your marriage and seeing that threesome truly becoming it. God is the head and the husband and wife is following along with the things that he has to say. Don't forget that you can rewatch all of our videos on our marriage series by going to our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com. The time is now to bring your donations to TV44. We're gearing up for this year's auction, and we need your items now to make it a success. Furniture, collectibles, antiques, tools, vehicles, mowers, anything of value. Drop-offs accepted Monday through Thursday, 10 till 3. Call for Friday hours, 419-339-4444. Donate your items now to the TV44 auction. And that's a reminder that yes, we are gladly accepting your auction donations now. You can bring your items to TV44 Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Call in advance to inquire about Friday drop-off times. And now we close our show once again thinking about brotherly kindness in our scripture for this week. Hebrews 13, 1 through 2, and then verse 5. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers, for by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Let your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Something to keep in mind throughout this week. Thank you for joining us today on Faith and Friends. We'll see you next time.